being immersed in this health world now for so many years, I feel like the person that is diagnosed with cancer and they go and do a Google search, they're going to fall into two camps or of routes that they could take in the natural realm. One being the ketogenic diet with meat and animal products, and the other being the plant-based world and the vegan diet. So you talked about science there. Let's talk about what science, we know how you feel about the keto with including meats, but for the person that falls into that other camp in their searches, what does science show when it comes to plant-based eating and fighting cancer? It shows almost absolutely nothing, but I will go over a couple of trials. So there was, um, there is a trial in a breast cancer population where they were re- you know, trying to eat or not trying, told to eat low fat, um, you know, and when you eat low fat, you have to exclude a lot of animal products because they are high in fat. So just by the nature of it being a low fat diet, but guess what? They also got rid of processed foods, right? Because ice cream and pizza and donuts are high fat. So they got, they actually ate a cleaner diet. Um, there was a small, uh, survival benefit in ERPR negative breast cancer patients, but a similar trial done at the same time published within the same year, I believe, or at least a year off showed no benefit. So again, it was a very small benefit. And if we look at it from a metabolism point of view, okay, we just removed all the high fat, high carb foods. And yes, we stuck with the low fat foods, which typically are more plant based, whole grains, you know, legumes and fruits and vegetables, et cetera. But we know that just by doing that, there is randomized data that shows that that can lower glucose and insulin in some people. So, what would have been more interesting in that trial had they tested insulin before and after? And who were the people who actually benefited? Were those people who ended up lowering their insulin or not. There was another study in prostate. It's like we get to hear a lot in prostate. We can't eat red meat or eggs. or um, And that's because there was a Dean Ornish trial that looked at doing a very low fat plant-based diet, but he looked at five other things, exercise recommendations, supplements. He, he supplemented omega-3s and vitamin D, and I can't remember the other pieces. Um, there was a support group. There was like weekly phone calls with the dietitian and there was meditation, you know, so that was like all of those pieces we talked about from a mitochondrial healing, stress reduction and exercise and, you know, cleaning up or, or kind of, um, uh, filling in the gaps of nutrition. Um, and, and there was a slight advantage, barely an advantage, but a slight advantage. And so that gets talked about quite a lot back to were those the people who lowered insulin or not? Um, when we compare a ketogenic diet to a low fat diet, to any other diet, a ketogenic diet will always do better at lowering glucose, insulin, triglycerides, raising HDL, reversing metabolic syndrome, reversing diabetes, reversing obesity, you name it. A ketogenic diet always wins. So a low carbohydrate diet just seems to be far, far more powerful. And in addition, we have essential amino acids and essential fatty acids. And a ketogenic diet is robust in uh, amino acids and fatty acids. And a low fat diet, plant based diet is sadly lacking in those as well as other micronutrients, heme iron, B12. Omega, well, you can sometimes get omega threes because sometimes the plant based folks will still take in fish or something. But, but again, um, I think that when we look at it as a whole, I think the data continually supports the best diet at improving insulin resistance, which is a ketogenic diet, hands down. One of my favorite Quicksilver scientific products is their liposomal vitamin C. It's great for immune support, collagen production, and antioxidant protection. The liposome is a great delivery system for effectively getting the vitamin C into your body. Save 15% by clicking the link in the description. And now back to the show. All right, we got to go deeper into one piece you brought up quickly there. 
And that was the Dean Ornish study. You mentioned eggs and red meat, and they're tied to cancer, prostate cancer. There I is a general. Say they're tied to cancer. No, they, well, no, but you the made the statement that there. that's the myth. Yeah, let's break this myth because a lot of people tie processed meats and red meats to cancer as a whole. So for somebody adopting a ketogenic diet, naturally they're going to take in, I shouldn't say always, but in general, they're going to be taking in quite a bit of animal protein. So that would be a concern if that myth was true. So can you debunk it for us? Yeah. Well, so number one, when we've actually looked at prostate cancers, so insulin and IGF-1 are big drivers or associations with prostate cancer. What we know that when we follow ketogenic diets, there's actually randomized trial data that we lower insulin and IGF-1. And those are people eating predominantly. They actually looked at their diets, eggs, red meat, you know, all of those foods that we think are, you know, a problem. So again, in a ketogenic state or in a low carb, high fat diet, Red meat does not drive up insulin. It does not drive up IGF-1, nor do eggs. Um, When uh, the Cochrane Review looked at all of these things, they couldn't find a link between any of that and prostate cancer. When we've looked uh, at observational studies, just on if we go back to the fruit and vegetables, there's actually no improvement. And even there was one study that showed worsening prostate risk with intake. So observational studies are terrible. Um, We have to look at mechanisms. So what drives cancer growth and what foods can drive those, those markers or those, those drivers up. And so, yes, when we do a low carbohydrate, sorry, a low fat diet, there are some people who will lower insulin and lower IGF-1. Um, although not as dramatically or as numerous. So as many people will do it by doing a low carb, high fat. So it's, again, it's about mechanism. It's not about the individual food. So, um, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many different myths I've heard, but again, always go back to the study. If there, if there even is one, and let, you know, sometimes it's just mantra. I'm just going to say this statement and I'll say it enough. Everybody will believe me. Sometimes it comes from a study, but now you have to look at the study. Was that red meat in the setting of, oh, meat, you know, a spaghetti and meatballs counts as meat and a hamburger on a bun with ketchup and mayonnaise and, a, you know, French fries count as meat? Um, or are we talking steak and broccoli? Um, does, do eggs are we talking scrambled eggs or are we talking ice cream and donuts and pastries, which are all made from eggs? And, and almost always, if the study doesn't sound right to me, it's always because they include a whole bunch of processed garbage as their food. So it's not the actual food itself. So if we could just go back to studying steak and eggs, you know, broccoli and salad, we'd probably do pretty darn well. Okay. How do you think about steak and eggs versus say like sausages, salami, pepperonis, things that are more processed? So I I think that we don't have to be adamant about not excluding some of the cured meats. I think that curing meats were probably part of our, you know, ancestral, we had to do something to, you know, make the animal last for more than a day. Um, But I will say that I don't, I think we lose something in the nutritional value of cured meats. Like that fresh meat is coming with maybe more minerals or more, uh, like are we degrading some of the vitamin and some of the pieces? But as far as, you know, do processed meats cause cancer? There's actually no data to support that. There's one statement in the WHO, um, that they, they blame both red meat and processed meat, but actually in the red meat section, they did not come up with any data that actually supported that claim. So it was very weak. Um, And again, most of it was all observational, right? We just talked about the classic meat eater, which is our pizza and hamburger eater, not our steak and broccoli eater. Um, And then um, there was in the processed meat, they really cherry picked 
what they looked at. And, and there is some data that, um, yeah, I guess if you give processed meats to a rat that you injected with cancer, it might grow, but will it cause that cancer to grow? And in the observational literature, you know, no. And there, there was a rat study that was done where they fed the rats a bunch of different meats. And the bacon fed rats actually had the best looking colons. And in that study or in that WHO um, paper, they said the only link that they could even possibly say was in colon cancer. And it wasn't in any other cancer, yet somehow it's been blanketed over every single cancer is caused by red meat and processed meat. And yet we don't really have the data to say even colon cancer is. Um, and so I'm not opposed to it on a occasion. Maybe you're at a Super Bowl party and there's a meat and cheese tray, you know, and that's the only thing that's on plan there, have some, but that wouldn't be the best source of nutrition. That wouldn't be, I don't want you, you know, maybe going on the bacon diet, but, um, but I think that, that again, optimizing our nutrition, that's really what a, a true ketogenic diet is. It's not the keto products and the keto baked goods and the keto whatever. That's not a ketogenic diet in my book. Mine is eating real ancestral anti-inflammatory nutrient dense, you know, foods that are made to nourish us. We eat for nourishment. We eat for all of these essential macro and micronutrients that we, that we need to live and to run our body. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. This is your body saying, hey, I finally had to throw down this really big, scary word at you so that you would stop and listen, so that you would stop and look. And so now let's just work to see what is...